Our topic of discussion in neurology is multiple sclerosis. Um, now, multiple sclerosis, what is the importance of this topic is like after stroke and Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, um, like you can say after stroke, multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease, you can say, are the two common physically disabling diseases of the CNS, okay? Uh, so, uh, now, uh, multiple sclerosis, it affects young people, usually around the age of 20 to 40, and uh, which is quite different, you can say, like stroke and Parkinson's disease, which affect the old people. Uh, so, under 45 years of age, you know, Stroke and Parkinson's disease is unusual diseases, but multiple sclerosis is quite common. It has a potential to be a very severe type of condition, and uh, multiple, multiple sclerosis can lead to disability, can lead to wheelchair life, or even more. So it's a kind of crippling disease. So... Um, in general, because uh, again, I have done this multiple sclerosis in quite a huge detail. Many people think uh, or believe that you know multiple sclerosis is a very, very, very bad condition and it will end up everyone on the wheelchairs. But it is not the case because, uh, or you can say that the image of the disease is quite worse in the general population. And uh, of course, like this disease can lead to disability, but not in, like not in every patient. Okay. Um, nowadays, of course, a lot of treatment is available for this condition. Okay, so multiple sclerosis is very common in Western countries like UK, and. Uh, it is one of the cause of neurological disability in the people who are under age of 50. So, you can say it affects young people, especially. So, uh, how we can uh, understand this condition, again, I would like to start the, my discussion with uh, a scenario so see like in this one they are talking about a 21 years old female she is a college student and she is presenting with presented with numbness and weakness in both arms for days but both legs are okay and there is no disturbance of sphincters and there is no predisposing factors such as vaccinations or uh, infections and when we did in investigation, the spinal MRI shows C3 and C4 lesion. CSF is normal. There is no oligoclonal glands and blood chemicals are normal. Autoantibodies are negative. Test for infections are negative. So, like this is the spinal MRI of this lady. And this is the CT scan of this one. Okay. So, here, like they are talking about what, what is the suggested diagnosis. Either it is multiple sclerosis or not, or either it's a clinically isolated syndrome. So, I will explain you what is this, right? So first of all, I would talk about the definition. What is, what is multiple sclerosis? It's a chronic inflammatory disease okay of the now the important thing is c and s central nervous system right so remember when it is c and s central nervous system so it is about the structures which are included in cns not the peripheral nervous system characterized by relapsing Relap relapsing 
remitting or progressive so see it could be relapsing remitting or it could be progressive neurologic symptoms due to inflammation B myelination and axonal degeneration okay now this is the you can say a quite a complete definition see it's a chronic inflammatory disease in the CNS which could be relapsing remitting which could be progressive and there are neurological symptoms. Why there's neurological symptoms? Because there is inflammation, demyelination, or axonal degeneration of some part of the CNS. Now, if you understand up till here, so D, what is demyelination? Simply uh, remember, like the myelin sheet. What is the function of myelin sheet? Uh, myelin sheet is there to it's a covering, protective covering, like, you know, our electric current wires have a covering of an insulator so that people cannot get current, right? So, what is this? What happens in these patients is basically the myelin sheet is destroyed, okay? And when the myelin sheet is destroyed, the axons, they cannot pass the impulses like what they do normally. Okay, so you can also say that multiple sclerosis are basically the scars or scar scarring, scar the scar formation in the nervous system. So this lesion most commonly affect the white matter. Okay, and so when when it affect the white matter, it can affect the white uh, white matter uh, in optic nerve. Or brain stem or basal ganglia or spinal cord okay. so it can affect like the white matter of all these things so one of the place you know which it affect the white matter is the place around the ventricles you know, the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. Now, what is the function of white matter? The white matter uh, uh, is the one, uh, is like the white matter cells are carry, like they carry signals between the gray matter areas, okay? So, Now, what happens when the, there is demyelination or the myelin sheet is lost, the electrical currents or the action potentials, uh, like they cannot be conducted as in the normal people, okay? And uh, there is, when there is le less electrical impulses, so what happens? Like uh, there will be neurological symptoms, depending on what area damages there you know there will be the same uh, neurological symptoms okay so of course like in the, the bad thing like in this case uh, we cannot say like what kind of symptom will be there for example if someone have the optic nerve involved so there will be abnormal with the vision uh, someone have the demyelination of the area which is controlling the arm there will be symptoms over there so of course like it depends on what area Uh, it depends on the area which is involved. So, uh, of course, like there could be inflammation as well, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, uh, you can see over here uh, there is something called as uh, CIS. What is CIS? It is basically clinically isolated syndrome. Okay. It is clinically isolated syndrome so uh, okay of course like this slide goes in a different way like they are, they are talking about this girl you know this is a case presentation of that girl so uh, 
I, I, will, I will of course like you will, you will understand when you will understand the condition uh, okay what happens now we have to uh, like uh, this is the definition of multiple sclerosis but uh, basically this is not the diagnostic criteria of the multiple sclerosis okay um, in multiple sclerosis uh, what happens is uh, we diagnose the patients uh, depending on how they are presenting right uh, so uh, now I will tell you few terms which will which will like which will make you the, understand the conditions better there is something called as devix devix um, disease or uh, it is also called as uh, um, neuro my myelitis optica okay so what happens in these in these patients is basically there is severe optic neuritis or inflammation of the optic nerve as well as myelitis the spinal cord have transverse myelitis okay so it is also called as nmo nmo and what happens like it happens due to an uh, antibody which destroy these two structures uh, and we call that antibody as NMO antibody okay okay what is CIS it is clinically isolated syndrome now what is CIS simply clinically isolated syndrome it's a multiple sclerosis like episode okay but just one okay so simply anyone who have CIS, it may progress to multiple sclerosis, okay? So this thing is an important thing. And now, um, uh, like this clinical isolated syndrome is important. Like when we will, we will discuss more, you will understand what I'm saying. Uh, there is other terms as well, but uh, like pediatric multiple sclerosis is also there then there is something called as ADEM or what you can say acute um, disseminated uh, in caflo myelitis okay uh, this is also called as ADEM okay so what is this one like this is like again demyelinating type of disorder okay uh, with multiple areas of the brain is destroyed so of course like there will be multiple neurological symptoms okay it is also mainly seen in children uh, then there is something called as you know uh, Marburg syndrome Marburg condition Marburg syndrome Marburg disease this is the people who have uh, uh, very rapidly progressive type of multiple sclerosis or you can say a very severe or you can say fulminant multiple sclerosis is called it is called as Marburg syndrome okay Again, up until now, I did not talk about the diagnostic criteria of uh, what you can say uh, multiple sclerosis, right? Which I will I will discuss now. Okay, so see one thing which you must remember or which you must understand until now. What I told you, multiple sclerosis is what there is demyelination going on, there is inflammation going on, and there is axonal degeneration is going on, right? So. And one very important thing, remember, is the condition of CNS, which means like it doesn't involve the peripheral nervous system. So what structure it will involve? It is going to involve the cerebrum, the brainstem, the cerebellum, and the spinal cord, right? So now, because we are not having a face-to-face -face class, many students, they ask, like, if it just involved the CNS, so why it involved the optic nerve? So guys, remember this thing that optic nerve is not a true cranial nerve. It's not a part of peripheral nervous system. Rather, rather, if you had done embryology, this is an outgrowth of the brain. So that's why multiple sclerosis do affect the optic nerve. Okay. This is the reason behind this thing. And that's the reason like multiple sclerosis does not damage or involve the other cranial nerve spinal nerves or peripheral nerves okay uh, i hope you understand this point it's a very 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 important top point and ask many time on the mcqs 
So the main insult which is happening is on the myelin sheath. And the axons are relatively spared in this condition, okay? So uh, basically, you know, uh, if you had done the conduction system properly in physiology, you know, to for from node to node transmission of the impulses, uh, uh, what you can say, a myelin, myelinated nerve fiber should be there or myelin sheet should be there. So whenever this one is damaged or there is demyelination, you know, this conduction is very slow. Okay. And how much conduction is affected, it depends on the size of the lesion. Okay. How much is the size of lesion? So, clinically, the lesion, they evolve like over a few days and last, and they last for a few days or weeks and they gradually settle down. So see, relapsing, remitting. The symptoms came and then they improve. Remitting is there. Then again symptoms came and then they, they remit. But for example, there is something progressive like the symptoms came, it is never going and it is progressing, progressing, progressing and progressing. Okay, so now uh, the other points which I wanted to tell you um, is the yes is the patterns or we can say the clinical patterns of multiple sclerosis. Okay, there are four uh, uh, three major clinical patterns. By the way, four we can say one which is the most common type of. Uh, Multiple sclerosis is called as relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis. Okay, and it is around 85% of the patient who get multiple sclerosis, they get this type. Relapsing, remitting. Symptoms came, symptoms gone. Symptoms came, symptoms gone. But with each episode of symptoms come and gone, there is not fully recovery. Okay. The other type is called as primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Like a person who get the symptoms and they becoming worse, worse, worse and worse. So there is no remission. Okay. It is the second most common type. Okay. Around 10% of the patient they get this type. And the third type is uh, called as progressive relapsing multiple sclerosis so what is this these patients is they get the symptoms the symptoms stayed okay and then uh, there is a little relapse but the symptoms are still there and then again they progress okay so they are progressing with relapsing progressing with relapsing like this and the last time type is called as secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. So basically what happens in these patients is um, when they get the symptoms, there is relapse, or there is remitting. Okay. So like the symptoms are gone. But second time when the symptoms will start, then it will progress. Okay, so that's why it is called as secondary progressive. This one is called as primary progressive. Like when once the disease in this primary progressive start, it keep on going up, okay? And when the disease in secondary progressive will start, uh, there is one remission and then it will go up, okay? So these are the four clinical patterns, okay? The most common type is the relapsing remitting, okay? They, they, there is symptom, it will go. There is symptom, it will go. There is symptom, it will go. Like this way, okay? So if you had understand this thing, now we can move a little further. And what we, are, we can discuss over here is um, the causes, okay? What is the etiology? Etiology of multiple sclerosis. Now, uh, you know, one thing, you know, there is genetic uh, factors they found, okay? Uh, they found the people who have HLA, DRB1 gene, uh, they are more susceptible to get multiple sclerosis. Okay, so it have a connection between human leukocyte antigen, um, DRB1 type of the patients, okay. And they found like in twins, you know, uh, when one twin is affected, so there is 30% chances that the other 
uh, twin is also affected. And the other factors which they can, they are success, su there is success in uh, what like they, they found some association is environmental factors. Now, what they found in this one that multiple sclerosis is a uh, problem, is a condition which is more prevalent in the countries where there is less sun exposure. Okay, for example, uh, Europe, Canada, and New Zealand, okay, like these countries, uh, even the United States, you know, the north part, they get less, less sun exposure. So when they get less sun, sun exposure, basically they make, they have low levels of vitamin D, okay. And one more association which they found is they found the connection of multiple sclerosis with an infection, a viral infection, Epstein Barr virus. Okay, they found that the people who have Epstein Barr virus infection, they will get or they can get, not will get, sorry, they can get multiple sclerosis. Okay, so these are the factors they found. So, uh, guys, remember females are more affected than males. The ratio is three, ratio one. Okay, so they are more affected and. Uh, uh, primary progressive type of multiple sclerosis basically affect mostly the old people okay so now I will tell you the diagnostic criteria of the most common one relapsing remitting multiple process okay okay now um, very 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 important thing to understand here is the definition of this thing to diagnose this one there should be a criteria which should be met and this criteria is called as McDonald uh, McDonald criteria this criteria is used to diagnose anyone with relapse and remitting multiple sclerosis. What is the criteria? It is there should be dissemination in time as well as in space. Dissemination in time and there should be dissemination in space. Okay. So, uh, remember we cannot diagnose anyone with multiple sclerosis in most of the cases on one attack, okay? We need at least two attacks or two uh, clinical, um, what you can say, uh, two, two clinical, uh, clinically, um, diagnosed episodes of uh, neurological symptoms okay so whenever it occurs one time we call it as clinical isolated syndrome okay so dissemination in time i will explain you what it is there should be two or more attack okay two or more attacks of you can say demyelination of course like uh, that's what happening in in multiple sclerosis so Whenever the patient have these symptoms, so what we do, basically we do MRI, okay? And what type of MRI we do uh, is, uh, what you can say, uh, there should be two more attacks uh, and the presence of asymptomatic, okay? gadolinium enhancing MRI lesions okay at any time okay so uh, anyone who have two or more attacks or the presence of if the patient is asymptomatic but you can found lesions in the brain on gadolinium 
enhanced MRI lesions or T2 weighted MRI scans if we can found two areas in the brains which are damaged okay so that is dissemination in time okay how what is dissemination in space again anyone who have one or more than one one or more than one okay um, I don't know you know what is t2 weighted images or what is t1 a weighted images on MRI so the t2 lesions on MRI in at least uh, two of the four CNS regions and these are the regions you know which are mostly um, affected in multiple sclerosis one region is periventricular okay one is juxta cortical one is infra tentorial and one is spinal cord okay okay or you can say or the developing of a second attack uh, that implicates a different CNS region okay see guys a patient came to me and he have some vision problem I try to look all the causes of CNS like vision problem I couldn't found anything I said okay I will do a MRI and what I found that okay there is demyelination going on right and that patient recovered after a few days and after six months the patient came and he said now he have numbness in the arm and again I did MRI and I found like the now the, that same lesion is in some other area so see this is dissemination in time and dissemination in space as well one attack was uh, with the eye the other attack is with the arm and one attack was six months back and the other attack is today so see dissemination in time and dissemination in space so this is the diagnosis criteria of relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis okay so simply they like it is caused by lesions in different parts of cns occurring at different times in the person life simply okay so this dissemination of lesions in time and place it remains the classical and diagnostic characteristic of multiple sclerosis which i already told you which what what criteria we use the name of this criteria is mcdonald's criteria so the lesions can be anywhere in the cns okay and it could be of any size and it could be permanent okay or it could be uh, remitting like remission is there but maybe not complete remission right so uh, of course like there is demyelination there is axonal damage okay and all these things are there so uh, this is like how we disseminate we see like there is either there is any dissemination in time and dissemination in space right so of course every patient present with different features every patient have different what you can say sign and symptoms because we don't know which area of the spinal cord or which area of the brain is damaged right so of course like we cannot talk about all the clinical features here so it could be uh, any area but remember only cns areas right only cns area so uh, we can get all these features okay uh, now uh, guys optic nerve is the more is a very common and typical manifestation of multiple sclerosis okay and whenever the lesion is in the optic nerve the patient present with of course vision problems okay so this is very important and uh, there could be facial numbness there could be facial weakness there could be vertigo there could be nausea there could be vomiting there could be dysarthria there could be sensory deficits there could be motor deficits there could be loss of pain loss of temperature tingling sensation numbness any kind of problem can be there okay so uh, 
I remember this thing. So simply, maybe you will found the same patient. He presented to you in 2011 with loss of vision in left eye. Then he presented to you in 2014 with numbness and weakness in, for example, both legs and some bladder disturbance. And maybe you will found the same patient in 2017 with double vision and so like this, right? So see, different areas of the brain is damaged, different symptoms are there and you did imaging and what you found that you can you can appreciate the lesions on MRI, right? So this is how the patients present. Now, uh, like if we will talk about the clinical features in a little more detail, I will tell you what can be the clinical features. So the clinical features of uh, multiple sclerosis, remember, symptoms can be any, okay? Optic neuritis, visual disturbance, numbness, weakness, spasticity, diplopia, impaired gait, vertigo, bladder dysfunction. Any symptom can be there. Okay. Remember two terms. One is called as Le Hermite sign. Okay. What is this one? When we flex or flexion of neck, when we flex their neck, Okay, flexion of neck causes electric um, uh, shock sensation, okay, down back into the limbs, okay. So when you flex the neck of these person, they feel electric shock all the way down to the limbs. So this, why this sign is important if this is positive, remember there is a cervical cord lesion is there right so this is this this uh, uh, sign is important to check like either the cervical cord is involved or not one of the thing is Uthoff's phenomena okay so what is this one uh, now uh, whenever there is heat or warm so in heat makes the symptoms worse okay so this is uh, one of the thing uh, we observe in these patients uh, classically you know it affects what you can say the optic nerve so you can say uh, optic neuritis is the one which is uh, mostly affected okay so they have like worsening of symptoms uh, neuritis neuritis okay so they have worsening of the symptoms whenever there is heat right so this is how the patient present and then for example whenever there is you know secondary progressive multiple sclerosis classically they present with the weakness of legs okay and there are more cerebellar findings like intention tremors are there uh, okay so guys remember like there are some symptoms which are not commonly found in multiple sclerosis like visual field defects are not common aphasia is not common okay things like this so the, of course, like remember about the relapse or the remitting, uh, relapsing remitting type that, you know, like there is clinical dysfunction, it can stay for days to weeks, okay, and then, then there will be remission, okay, uh, and then the symptoms come back after we don't know how much time, okay, because there is dissemination in time. So, symptoms last for at least 24 hours, of course, right, so this thing is important, okay, so uh, now, uh, uh, or what you can say uh, whenever there is multiple sclerosis uh, what we do is uh, uh, this is like just to sh uh, show you what demyelination do right uh, so um, now multiple sclerosis whenever it is there uh, okay yes very good diagram you can see over here you know uh, someone who is going like this way this way this way and this way it is relaxing remitting right and some this one is like the progressive uh, type so if someone a progressive primary progressive of course when the symptom will start like the symptom will get damaged damaged and damaged, bad bad and bad right so uh, like this one so as i show you presentation can be anything right so of course like i don't want to talk about all the signs and symptoms because simply any any area can be damaged any sign and symptom can be present okay and there is relapsing relapses and remittance uh, rem uh, remitting type 
and the diagnosis right okay yes uh, sorry in diagnosis of course uh, yeah, what what other investigations we can do of course we can do MRI okay t2 weighted images okay uh, which 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 is enhanced by gadolinium okay and the typical typical locations I already told you uh, it is periventricular it is can be in the brain stem or it could be juxtacortical it could be spinal cord okay and uh, uh, we can check the CSF okay so in these patients you know when we check their CSF what we found is oligoclonal bands okay so what is oligoclonal bands uh, these are basically IgG uh, levels are increased okay then that's why you know we see the banding uh, uh, if you remember I talk about this one um, in okay no, not with you guys but in hematology lectures you can found I explain what is electrophoresis and how these oligoclonal bands are formed uh, and uh, what we can check in them is visual evoke potentials okay uh, this is a test which we which 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 can be uh, done to check the nerve conductions okay so these all tests can be done in these patients so now uh, uh, I told you about McDonald's criteria already okay so this is all the same things which I explained uh, you can see over here uh, this is a T1 weighted image and this is a T2 weighted image okay and there is like the enhancing is there and we can see the lesions here uh, in these patients okay so uh, you can see like you know this is a gadolinium enhanced MRI see you can see the lesion over here over here and over here okay yes Dowson's fingers yes sorry but I forget this one to talk about this one uh, what is Dowson fingers is basically uh, what we see is like periventricle these are periventricular lesions like around the ventricles okay uh, which are extending into corpus callosum okay so it, it, it is called as uh, what you can say uh, Dowson fingers this is again a feature which we can see on the uh, MRI okay now, I already explained you this thing guys like the most common places okay this is the criteria dissemination in time as well as dissemination in, in space okay uh, yeah see it's the, the, they had done uh, electrophoresis and see uh, what they found is like uh, this is the normal one and see in this one uh, like uh, these are the other proteins which are same like this but here you can see like there are more bands are there so basically what is electrophoresis they uh, put the uh, CSF or blood whatever here and they pass a current and everything start moving according to their weight and charge so depending on the weight and charge they they cover different distances okay so in this one like the IgGs they make these bands because they are raised so just think again see they are showing you like oligoclonal banding like more more is there this is the, the one which is with multiple sclerosis okay so now uh, uh, this thing I already explained uh, yes you can see this one I was searching for this from that time but I couldn't remember like this is there we have a relapsing remitting see uh, relapse is there, emitting is there, then again more, 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 one more relapse. But you can see like with multiple attacks the condition is becoming worse, worse and worse. This is secondary progressive. The symptoms came and then it resolved, some symptoms came then it resolved and then the symptoms came but it then keep on progressive. And this is primary progressive. Uh, once the symptoms started it never, there is no remission rather, it's going up and up and up. And this is progressive relapsing. Symptoms started, there is relapse but the remission is not complete then again the condition become worse again more and more, more relapse but the symptoms become worse worse and worse right so this is like how they present again like this is a, a difficulty criteria like uh, uh, how when the patients are full ambulatory and how many of them you know they can go to the wheelchair life or bed bound or they can walk with it or all this stuff right and how many of them you know they have like they can die because of multiple sclerosis so um, guys uh, what is the treatment of this condition so uh, if I will talk about the treatment in my own way uh, like which uh, you know like conservative management and 
uh, whenever like you know we talk about the treatment uh, remember it is not only about drugs guys you know uh, first of all educate like tell the patient what is the condition okay educate the patient how the condition is inform them about their diagnosis it's a very bad news that they have multiple sclerosis okay educate their family about the condition okay uh, if they have any myths or any concepts like it's a condition which will end up the, them on wheelchair tell them it is not like this okay encourage normal attitudes in life and normal activities uh, in them like of course that's very important uh, and if the condition is serious of course then you have to educate you have to provide them with a lot of support you have to attend their individual symptoms like if they have vision problems you can provide them with aids okay if they have paraplegia you can of course refer them to physiotherapy and walking aids if they have pain you can give them painkillers especially these are neurological pains or nerve pains so gabapentin amitriptyline these kind of things can be used if they have fatigue which is a very common symptom and hard to treat but again it can respond by antidepressants so of course like it is not a single person brother there are nurses physiotherapists occupational therapists speech therapists social workers who uh, help the physician to treat the patient okay so we encourage like more and more activities in, the, in these patients okay um, encourage them to uh, have uh, you can say uh, more and more uh, daily activities or okay, things like this and <laughs> after that of course like uh, there are two main things which we have to discuss in this one uh, what to do like what is what to do in acute attack okay like uh, whenever there is a relapse okay uh, acute treatment what should be acute treatment okay and what is the treatment which we uh, which we should give, uh, which we call it as a disease modifying therapy, right? So whenever anyone have acute attack, guys, we give them corticosteroids. So what kind of corticosteroids? Methylprednisolone, okay? IV daily, intravenously daily for three to seven days, okay? Uh, if they are not responding to that, so in emergencies, we can go for plasma uh, exchange, okay? This can be done as well. And then one of the thing is like, we give them, disease modifying therapy what is disease modifying therapy it is to reduce the new lesions and minimize disability decrease the relapse rate decrease the progression of disability or uh, slow down the formation of mri lesions so in this one there is a lot of drugs are available first some are first line some are second line okay now, for example here they have given the name of uh, um, uh, wait i will tell you um, this one is like you know if there is no response plasma exchange if there is no response to the corticosteroids okay so slow down the axonal damage and disability slow down the conversion of uh, cyst to cdms reduce the relapse and reduce the t2 lesions um, what are the drugs which are there okay uh, now uh, there are different drugs are available okay uh, i don't want to put you in too much difficulty of course no one can remember the names but the first line drugs are basically interferon injections okay um, I, I would rather write down in my own way okay so that things will become easy for you guys um, first line therapy you know uh, first line drugs which is used for disease modifying therapy uh, the first line drugs which we can give is um, uh, terry flu no might okay as well as we can give them interferon um, beta injections okay and one of the drug which is i think written in all the neurology books is called as gletti rammer acetate okay these are the disease modifying drugs which we used okay if they don't work then we go on to the second line drugs okay mm -hmm. for example uh, they are expensive of course uh, Natalizumab can be given, okay, as well as like uh, Natalizumab. You want you know the good thing about these drugs is like they they are not needed daily. Rather, 
uh, we can give them on monthly basis okay they like natalizumab up we give them a monthly injection okay uh, this one anyone who have cis or uh, clinical uh, clinically uh, isolated so in see inf interferon beta is there and uh, glutary acetate is there even the doses are written you don't have to remember them uh, yes sorry yeah this one uh, fingol limod is also a second line drug okay i can write over here uh, it's a second line as well okay uh, like uh, nitalizumab so anyone who have uh, uh, what you can say uh, uh, cis or uh, clinically isolated syndrome so uh, a very nice way to treat that is with interferons okay so uh, you can see this drug like mitos and tron is also there uh, it is also approved for this is the fd approved for rrms or spms like secondary progressive or relapse remitting or primary progressive okay so okay uh, now um, uh, other than this you know there are many symptomatic therapy as well if the if the patient have spasticity you can give them baclofen you can give them tizanidine you can give them dentroline you can give them botulinum toxin for pain you can give them carbamazepine or pregabalin seizures give aeds depression ssris dementia dunapazine if they have maturation problem, you can give them these drugs. Constipation they have, give them high fiber dikes, diet slow, stool softeners. If they're complaining of too much fatigue, you can give them amantadine. Okay. For bladder dysfunction, we can also give them oxybutynin. So uh, if they have uh, what you can say, sexual dysfunction, Viagra or Sildenafil can be given to them. And uh, like this way. So the prognosis is good in females or the good prognostic factors is like the, when the, it's a female, she's young, the type she's having is a relapsing remitting type, okay. Uh, they have like good prognosis and anyone who have primary progressive poor prognosis, high rate of disability and poor response of therapy is there, okay. So life expectancy is 5 to 10 years lower. In this patient and two-thirds of deaths are related to MS and uh, uh, most people lose the ability to walk prior to that okay in these patients okay so this one is like you know what is neuromyelitis optica I told you in the start okay and uh, that's all guys uh, what you can say about multiple sclerosis and uh, this is like I told you A, D, E, M, acute disseminated encephalopathy. This one occurs in mostly in kids. So, thank you so much for listening, guys. See you in the next lecture.